So uh, I took many lessons from her. This is a lesson. Um, and uh, I would try stuff. Say again? From who? Uh, Feng Yan, Feng Feng, okay. Yeah. The second woman ever to become that. Bad Jaseki. All back then, this is 30 years ago. This is all correct style for back then. I like that I'm building a, in this bottom left. This is a special um, shape. Uh, these two mark stones are one further from my 4 4. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I know what you mean, yeah. So in order to explain this, let me put these here. And now, wherever black plays, a little over concentrated on the left. Yeah. Or and, and the same thing when the the two stones are on the third line as well, right? The same principle in play. Two stones on the third line. Yeah, so when, when when the K four and the D um, D ten stones on the third yeah. line, is third the line or fourth line, yeah, white's happy to come in. Yeah. But if they're further out and white comes in, now we can grow a perfect distance. So that's specifically why I made this one pinch. Uh, well, a couple options here. Um, this used to be a popular Jaseki 30 years ago. Uh, and I decided to play it. And at the end of this, we'll, there's something interesting. Want to get sacrificed. Sente, Sente, and Settle. Okay, so uh, black played first in this corner, and black played last. So black should be having eight more points than white. All make sense so far? Yes, yeah. Okay. White's corner is worth two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14. Uh, because black has underneath, um, there's Aji, so you can't count any of that. Um, so you can only count the corner. And white has to add a stone there. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13. We'll call it 14 points. Okay. Uh, black, and we know that we count two points per thickness, is indeed... Um, as we and black can count thickness all the way up to age 14 because white's weak there and there's a little extra here too and then we can go counting this stuff that's all part of my value and when you count all up black and white black is indeed eight points ahead in the upper left so it's equal yeah Lance maybe I, do, I, do, do you want to explain those two concepts about the two points per thickness and the eight points per move. Yeah. And of course we may end up re explaining it, but I'm yeah. going to go to the trouble of doing it because no one knows this. And it's so weird to me that no one knows it. I assume you remembered. Yes. Setting it up here. Okay, on top. Uh, everyone agrees white has the advantage because black gets zero points per move. On the right, black's getting one point per move. Not enough. 
white's thickness is worth more. On the left, black's getting three points per move. That's worth more than white's thickness. On the bottom, black's getting two points per move, and generally speaking, we're saying that it's equal. Well, if it's equal, and black's getting two points per move, then how do we count thickness? We count thickness as two points per thickness. Now, I love that explanation. Now, a couple other things. <clears throat> we said that white is better on top, on the A side. Uh, but that's not necessarily true. If the board we're looking at, black has amazing outside thickness, then black may have the advantage. So that's the thing about thickness. It always depends on context. But generally speaking, given normal context, that's where this equality comes in. All make sense? Very clear. Thank you. Okay. That put us here. Uh, so, the things to point out on this board, one is that White's A Shamari is facing the left, and it's kind of narrow. White's not real interested in that. Um, his C group is has an open skirt. So my approach there is really big. White's life is in jeopardy, and I just played a huge move in Sente. So that's a really big situation. If White approaches me, I'm very strong there. There's no coming under my position. So that's not the same as White's situation. And, of course, White's undercut uh, in the left, which doesn't mean anything because he's alive there, but it is big. And then we have my Moyo in the bottom left, which is quite large. So this is, everything about this board favors black. Um, but that doesn't mean black's ahead. It just means the game should be a little easier for black, a lot easier for black. Okay, white's move, white place here to remove that. Um, I just realized I'm making some speaking in details here, but I'm going to continue. When I see this move, I wonder, okay, as white continues, how that's going to affect me? Well, it does take me down to one eye. Yeah, but I can get out in many ways so easily. It's just not a, if white plays, I don't even have to respond. It's just not an issue right now, but it's certainly on my mind. Make sense? <clears throat> yes, so if white, if, if white played up the follow-up move, we could consider that black group as having one eye and running, which we're okay with, right? Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Now, I'm going to make a little different thing here. I'm going to add a white stone at D15. All of a sudden, Atari, no eye. I'd be responding. I'd be doing something. But as it is, no, I have a real eye, and I'm out, and there's Aji to get out even better, and he's not strong on top. You know, for instance, that's Sente. So really, I'm not in the least bit concerned, and the white stone's not there anyway. So, where to play? I'm alive in the upper right. Adding a stone does not help my defense. It does not attack white. It is only points, which I don't care about, and white doesn't care about, because it's the wrong direction for white. So the right's not big, while the bottom left is massive. And there's two choices there. A is a definite choice, because that removes white's face, or the big move at B. And potentially C. It's 
a little more modern back then b was the only move and i guess after, and, after after playing a we have quite a nice follow-up at r7 just like yeah yeah all righty love you used to be in uh when i would do lectures on kgs she'd come out knowing everyone can hear me and she says do they know you're naked <laughs> She had worked so hard on embarrassing me. Uh, what was your question here? So I guess one of the advantages of black playing at A is that we have a nice follow-up move at R7, which makes the right look a bit more interesting. Uh, yeah. Let's look at that specifically. And um, we, I'm just going to have white pass because we want to see the next move. There's two moves here. Yours big on the right threatens to live in the corner or there's this one which i prefer here now i'm threatening to surround you which would really be big and i'm growing my moyo which this board suggests is best yeah nice. now AlphaGo has shown us that it's all fine whatever you decide you want to do you know maybe yeah you can do whatever B, C, A, you can play here if you want. It's not a problem. It's just how you're going to use it later. So I played here. And I came up. And now white's going to need to uh, come in and deal with it. Interesting that, that white plays at M3 <clears throat> because your last move doesn't change your situation um, in the bottom right. Um, so I thought maybe White would be better off at playing like a move like a C3, for example. Right. <clears throat> yeah, this is one of those things that you start getting a handle on from like 3, 4 dawn on up. Mm -hmm. um, so when you ask the question, how am I going to get into Black's Moyo? This way. Okay, yeah, you approach it first. You approach yeah. first and notice... If assuming black jumps, this now threatens to connect under. You have a free move inside his territory. Okay. If I that, say, no, you can't connect under, well, maybe I'll just run out. It creates yeah. lots and lots of options. Is, is that why that principle holds? Because if we approach first, we, we make ourselves, um, we give ourselves a possibility of um, perhaps playing on the other side of where we approached. That's definitely one. Um, which I might consider the main one, but also if black were to get both, wow. And this has a follow-up, right? Why well, doesn't want that follow-up to happen? Why is he going to play here? Hmm. I mean, so there's a lot of reasons for white to play in three. Yeah. Now this game ended here. Uh, and you can even see what we said there, that we're running out on time. So why don't we stop here and review? But I thought it was interesting. Most notably, uh, the once we finish the upper left, and to realize, because on the surface, I would say to myself, oh, I got the whole corner. I feel bad. And my group on top isn't so settled. But when you start looking at it, no, it's very subtle. And the the Aji here is very meaningful in health and moyo and attacks. Um, so, yeah, good. Lance, maybe you could talk about, um, earlier you, t you mentioned about um, why you consider a move to be worth eight points at the beginning of the game. Uh, sure. Um, side moves are worth five, but let's talk about corner moves. Okay, we'll start with this one. How many points is there? That's the only territorial black now owns the corner. Oh, how many points did he get? Mm, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Very hard for white to approach this because the black's alive and it's just so, yeah, pretty much eight points. 
um, anytime someone does a specialty move, an emergency move, sure, something starts changing. Well, still, now black has more than eight. Um, so we generally think of what if it's approached? Well, eight points in the corner. Not that black's going to play there, but I mean, it's worth eight points. Does that part make sense? Yep. Yep. Um, is this worth, worth less? Uh, no. If it was, everyone would be playing the 3-3. Three, three. Uh, but again, if we just start doing some counting, which is harder now because that's not actual cash, we're pretty much talking about this area. Eight points. Now let's keep it up here. If one's worth eight, two should be worth 16, which they are. Let's count them up. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, eight and eight, 16. And it's just exact. And if we add a third one, three stones should be 24, count it up. 24 points are there. So it's pretty interesting that it just works out that way. Great, thank you. Uh, one other thing that's a bit advanced here. But it's very meaningful to me. About this move. <clears throat> okay. This black move, if we try to get a handle on how big is it? And we ask the question, is it worth more than one move? Now we can form a board where black's one move is worth 200 points. Maybe because something's living or dying or two moyers are linked together, becoming cash. And we try to make sure our opponent can't do that. But at the moment, there's four black moves in the bottom left. Each one's worth a move. Is this one worth more than a move? No. There's no nothing special. Uh, white can invade the left, the corner, the bottom. Reducing. It's all open. Not worth more than one move. What about... Now, was that black move worth more? No, it's still invadable. I mean, it's getting bigger and bigger, but white got bigger and stronger too. And if white chooses to, now white's got a double wing. Small moyo. Not that white's going to play there next. But to me, that's important. And I've been working with that, working recently on myself with that. <clears throat> letting my opponent get a whole lot of things and I know that's not worth more than one move. And later I can come in and make sure it's not. So, something I'm working on. Good enough? Yes, I, I think you also mentioned to me um, some other time about the, the value of a, a move on the side. Being five uh, Yeah. Uh, side is worth five. How do we calculate that? Um, well, is it worth more than two? Yeah, it's worth more than two. I mean, it's worth something. Um, I've always been told it's worth five. And I'm not sure I've ever done the math that you're suggesting I do now, but I'm going to. Okay. So that suggests that two should be worth 10. And if that's the case, then one should be worth five. That's a possible math outcome. So is this worth 10? Now, again, no white stones are nearby. As soon as we get a white stone nearby, it lowers the value. Let's, let's do that real quick. Black has a certain value. Now it's less. Yeah, but I can maintain my original value with a one-to-one. -one. I can always maintain the value if I want to. Now, usually we don't. We go to start something else. Oh, I thought you said it was worth 10 points. No, I gave you two moves in a row there. 
Okay, so is this worth 10? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's a nice little 10 point shape. And as soon as white approaches, we don't have plans on defending our points there, so it will become less, but just because we get more points somewhere else. Thank you. Answer your question? Yes. Beautiful. Good. Okay. Well, that kind of ends a session for today. Um, we need to decide when the next one's going to be.